Morning guys and welcome back to our Leica Watches 2. In this video I'm going to be unboxing a brand new limited edition Seiko Diver but I've also got my hands on a Rado watch which belongs to a good friend of mine. They've asked me to sell it for them on my eBay store so I thought as I've got it I might as well show it to you guys. Let's head over to the light box and have a look. Right, I'm going to start by unboxing this Rado, but as you can see, the box is pretty huge. It's one of the biggest watch boxes I've ever handled. So, um, yeah, let me get it out of the box. I'll be back in a mo. Well, as I suspected, there is a smaller box inside the bigger box. So we'll have a look inside that in a moment. Um, but yeah, let me just first show you what was inside the big box. We've got a warranty card. This watch was purchased from Francis and Gay in 2015 so it's just over seven years old and um, the battery has just been changed um, there is a cleaning cloth inside there which looks like it's never been used a couple of spare links and a massive um, manual um, this seems to be something that swiss made watches always have to come with just a huge manual right are you ready for this three two one and there it is the rado centrix stainless steel and ceramic watch very nice now on a number of websites this is referenced as being a unisex watch um, because of the size and style i guess um, it's 38 millimeters in diameter i'll include some specifications in the video description for both of these watches because I'm likely to forget some important details. I was about to close the lid then. I haven't got the watch out. Um, let's take a look. Right, and there it is. Um, what an interesting looking watch. The crystal um, covers the whole of the front facing part of the case. So you do have a sort of bezel, but it's actually sitting underneath the piece of crystal. Um, yeah, that is really unusual. And it's very slim look. It is a quartz powered Swiss made watch and um, really strong sunburst gray dial and some rose gold applied indices. I think they're applied anyway and um, hands. Um, yeah, very cool looking watch, um, sort of mid weight. So um, yeah, it's ceramic and steel. So you can tell there is some weight in it, but um, it's heavier than it would be if it was titanium. Um, but yeah, it's got a really sort of interesting greasy feel. I think these center links are ceramic and the H links are steel. The case looks to be steel. Um, unfortunately, um, the battery was changed recently. Or well, let me just show you the clasp. A little bit of wear and tear. There are some signs of wear and tear on it. Um, the ceramic elements seem to be, um, well, yeah, in fantastic condition. Um, I guess that is more hard wearing than steel. Um, but yeah, there are signs of wear and tear. And let me show you the bracelet um, or the buckle, I should say. Um, yeah, it opens up on both ends. This element is actually titanium. Look, it says titanium there. But anyway, um, the battery was changed recently. Um, I'm not sure by who, but they've made a bit of a mess of the case back. Look, it is a compression um, fitting or a clip on case back. And um, yeah, there are some pretty substantial scratches on the case back, which I'm going to try to improve and soften um, before I list this watch on eBay, because this is a 1300 euro watch. I'm pretty sure um, the list price in the UK was well over a thousand pounds. Um, yeah, not a cheap watch by any means. And what a shame, given the overall condition of the watch, it's pretty good um, to have the case back looking like that. Um, but anyway, it is the case back, I guess. Um, and when it's on your wrist, um, you're not going to notice it. But um, yeah, looking at the front of the watch and the bracelet to some degree, it looks to be in excellent condition. Here it is then, as is on my roughly average seven and a quarter inch ish wrist. It's a touch big for me at the moment, but I'm not going to resize it for fear of um, putting any more marks or scratches on it. So I'm going to leave it as it is and list it um yeah as it has come to me um but yeah i mean it's interesting isn't it not my cup of tea not a watch that i would be interested in purchasing um but it is not a cheap swiss made watch rado is a fairly premium swiss made brand and um, or swiss brand i should say and i suspect this watch is going to appeal um to a few people it is discontinued now it is seven years old um, but seemingly in reasonable condition so yeah right let's take a look at this seiko prospects 
Now, I bought this watch a little while ago from Ryan at Francis and Gay. There is the reference number, look, SPB253J1. And there's a couple of reasons I bought this particular Prospex diver. Firstly, um, I don't own a Prospex diver with this particular case, shape or style. So I was keen to pick one up. Um, the second reason, and I'll be honest, the main reason um, was that these watches were being fairly heavily discounted, but not just at Francis and Gay. Um, there were a number of sellers that were selling these watches at pretty heavily discounted prices. So I suspect they've not been selling well and Seiko were offering them to sellers at discounted prices and um, those sellers were then able to pass them on um, to customers for heavily discounted prices and um, yeah there it is this is the well it's a 62 mass reissue um, sort of case shape so an identical case shape and look to the very very popular SPB 143J1 that is probably Seiko's most popular and best selling modern Prospects Diver and um, this is essentially a DLC coated version and um, which comes with a nylon strap and a rubber strap and um, the strap being brown I think has put quite a few people off and I guess the fact that the watch is also black um, hasn't helped um, but one of the reasons I bought this particular watch is because I want to pair it up with a DLC coated bracelet from the Exciton 2 watch which James and I produced. Um, that is also a DLC coated um, bracelet and I think these flat um, ends to the case here are going to suit the flat end links that James designed for that bracelet. So yeah, let's get it out of the box and get it on that bracelet. Right, here it is. Let's put some power into the automatic 6R35, 70 hours of power reserve, um, 21,600 beats per hour, hacks and hand winds. Um, yeah, some people are not particularly keen on this movement because the um, accuracy can be a little bit erratic. I generally haven't had any problems, um, but yeah, it's not a favourite amongst Seiko enthusiasts. Um, the bezel's not lined up, so that gives us a good opportunity to have a fiddle with the bezel. Well, it's like most other Seiko bezels, a fairly muted, sort of greasy feel. Uh, muted clicks, fairly high resistance. Um, yeah, nice enough, actually. Let's check out the alignment. Fingers crossed. Oh, that looks pretty good. Well, bezel to uh, minute track on the dial looks pretty good. And the applied indices on the dial also look okay. I think think we might have received a fairly decent one cool dlc coated case and case back and bezel and crown um, i'm pretty sure it's dlc coating um, i've seen a couple of references to it online although none of those references have been by seiko themselves um, but they do reference it being a hard coating which suggests to me that it is dlc coating and there you can see at the bottom limited edition this is watch number 2447 of 5,500, so not that limited. Now it also comes with a black silicon strap with um, DLC coated hardware, um, but we don't wanna see it on this. Well, I don't anyway. I wanna see it on the DLC coated bracelet um, that James uh, designed. So let's get it on that. Right, and there it is on James's DLC coated five link tapering engineer style bracelet. Um, this bracelet actually came on a black DLC coated Exciton watch. So it is branded with JNG, which is the brand that James and I um, are well we own um, so yeah here is the DLC coated bracelet that looks pretty good doesn't it and um, the end links fit okay there's still a bit of a gap look um, it's not ideal but the flat um, end of the case um, means that I guess it suits um, this bracelet more than it would if it was a fairly traditional sort of curved end um, so yeah I'm really pleased I've picked this up for well, um, a pretty decent price um, given the discounts Francis and Gay were offering. And um, yeah, I think it um, is an improvement um, on this DLC coated um, bracelet. But I guess um, it's probably going to suit most black or dark coloured straps, nylon straps and rubber straps. So um, I suspect it's going to be a bit of a strap monster. Um, let's take a look at the loom. 
because I believe there are three different colours of loom on this watch. Blue, green and orange. And um, yeah, there it is. Look, uh, green loom pip, blue loom on the applied indices and orange loom on the minute hand. Very, very cool. Right, let's wrap it up then with a quick shot of this Prospects Diver on my roughly average seven and a quarter inch ish wrist. Um, yeah, that does look pretty cool on James's um, DLC coated bracelet. Right, guys, as always, massive thank you from me to you for tuning in. I do really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of the watches featured in this video. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. You'll see me again very, very soon.